Hello and welcome back to Gapy's Garden. This is the first episode of the season we're doing outside. I've got quite a bit of things planted in the ground. Still have a few things to go, but I wanted to give you a little tour and show you what I've got in the ground so far. We're doing something a little bit different this year. We've got this green plastic fencing up that kind of divides the backyard in half because we had a huge problem with rabbits getting into the garden last year and eating just about everything. So we put up this fence and it's kind of a temporary fence. We'll be replacing that with some metal rabbit fencing here pretty soon. But so far the rabbit hasn't gotten over into that part of the backyard over there which I'll be showing you in a minute. Um, so hopefully it stays that way. And we've also got this in-ground bed. This is the only in-ground bed we have, and it's already got some rabbit fencing surrounding it because we had a lot of problems last year with the rabbits getting into this particular bed. And this is the same wire fencing we'll be using um, where the green plastic stuff is right now. So in this bed so far, we've got our summer purple sprouting broccoli. I've got two of those, one here on the corner, and we've got another one over here in this corner. And then in between those two, we've got some dahlias. These are dahlias that I started from seed. So that is the first time I've tried that before. We've got two of those. And then we've got two rows of potatoes. So I've got a couple of different varieties of potatoes in here. Two of the varieties I got from a local farm feed store. And there's a red potato and a white potato there. The I think this first one here is a red potato and I don't see those. Looks like they're just starting to come up actually. Um, but the other one looks like it's coming along a little bit quicker. And then this next row are some potatoes that I started from seed, actual seeds that I saved from potato berries last year. So I've never done that before so that should be kind of interesting. We'll see how big those get but they're looking pretty good so far. And then I've got a couple of masquerade potatoes that I saved from last year's harvest and I'm not seeing those coming up yet so we'll see how those do. And then the rest of this bed is going to be corn. So I've got two different varieties of corn I'll be planting on the other half of this bed. These are the corn starts that I started from seed here actually inside. I did direct sow corn one year and birds ended up eating most of it so I don't do that again but these are the varieties that I'm going to be growing. I've got a Montana Kudo corn here and then this one is Cascade Ruby Gold and those are the two varieties that are drying corns that I'll be planting in the in-ground bed. And then we've got one more variety here. This is Orchard Baby. And this one is a sweet corn that is supposed to be a really short time to harvest. So I'm going to be planting that in the raised beds. And you can see we've got chickens roaming around the backyard here, which is new. Usually they don't get to come out here at all during this time of year. But they have not figured out yet how to get over this rabbit fencing. They can easily, very easily jump over that, but so far they've been staying out of there. So once they figure out how to get over the fence, they'll probably be locked in the chicken run for the rest of the season. But so far, so good. Now we've got one raised bed over here that's also got the green fence around it. And this green fence has been up pretty much for almost a year and the chickens have not gotten over that either, which is a surprise, but this has been doing a pretty good job of keeping the rabbits out of here because I've been growing greens in this bed all winter long. So a lot of the stuff that's in here is overwintered and a lot of it is stuff that I started this spring. We've got some celery here. This is a tango celery, an F1 variety that I haven't grown before. So I've got two, actually three of those. So there's one there one there and one over there. And then in between those, I've got a lot of spinaches. And I am starting to see some leaf miner damage on the spinach. So I'm not sure how much longer the spinach is gonna hold out, but I'll show you the damage here. So this is from a leaf miner. You can see the, the leaves are kind of starting to turn a lighter green color. And that happens a lot on spinaches and also Swiss chard. 
and I think I've already removed the Swiss chard from this bed that was overwintered. So this is all mostly spinach that's left um, that was overwintered. And we also have some lettuces, lots of lettuces in here. I think this red one here in the middle, that really big one, I think that's the last one left that was overwintered. I've already harvested all the, the rest. And then the rest of the greens in here are all lettuces that I planted this season. And we also have some chicory. So this is chicory here, and that is also called radicchio. And it's a really pretty red variety, but it's just starting to get a little bit of a head. So we should be able to get that harvested here before too long. And then this green thing growing out of the ground, that is a shawo fruit. It's a, I believe it's a Japanese radish and it's got some seed heads on it. So I'm working on saving seeds from that. So that has overwintered and started producing those seed pods. And what else do we have in here? Oh, we've got some other radishes in here. This is, so this is a Sakura Jima, I think a Japanese radish. And that is supposed to get really, really big. So hopefully we'll get some big guys out of that. And we've got some more radishes over here. And this one is a sparkler white tip radish. Got some sprouts just coming up there. And then I'm trying to grow some butterfly blue pea flowers this year. I've actually tried a few times and have failed, but this one seems to be doing a little bit better. It's not doing a very good job climbing, but I've got this trellis here for it to climb on and hopefully it will do that. And we've got some more older radishes here that are starting to bolt, unfortunately. So I've been picking a lot of those, but they didn't get very big before they started bolting. And more of the radicchio. And all of these here, I believe, are volunteer either dill or... I think it's fennel. But I grew fennel in here, I think it was two years ago, so we've still got lots of volunteers coming out. So I'm going to have to thin those out a little bit here pretty soon. And then I just planted the cucumbers in this bed. I've got two varieties here. One is called Natsu Fuchinari, and then we've got a Nokia F1. So I'm going to be starting, I actually started some more seeds of another variety that I'll be planting on the other side of this trellis. And the rest of the space is going to be for peppers. So I haven't gotten any of the peppers planted yet, but that's what's going to go in this space here. All right, let's go ahead and take a look at what's on the other side of this fence here. So I've got most of the figs out of the greenhouse, so they are all potted up and growing. I'll be doing a more specific fig update video here in the next couple of weeks but they're all doing pretty well. Let's just show you what's in the greenhouse right now. I've gotten a lot of stuff pulled out of here, so there's not really that much stuff left in here right now because I'm getting it prepared for the peppers, which are not in the ground yet. So all the peppers are here up on the shelves just waiting to get planted. So I'm hoping to get that done in the next few days or maybe in the next week or so. But we've got probably 35 pepper plants here that are just waiting to go in the ground. I've also got some more starts. So these are some straw flowers and cosmos. And I'm starting more straw flowers because the slugs ate most of the ones that I planted in the flower bed. So I started some more. And then the cosmos, I started more of those because I ended up selling all my starts on accident and forgot to set some aside for myself. So I started some more of those. So I did plant two tomatoes in here so far. Um, we've got some baronia and that is a dwarf tomato from the Dwarf Tomato Project. And then we've also got a Fortunia paste tomato here. And then we've got a few melons. So I'm, I haven't had much luck growing melons in our area. So I thought I would try growing them in the greenhouse for the first time because it's a lot warmer here. So we've got three different varieties. We've got the banana melon, and then we've got honey kiss. And then the last one is a Minnesota midget. And you can see I've got some of those red radicchios in here too. I've got this one here and this one here. 
And I'm surprised these have not bolted yet because it's gotten really, really hot in here. So they must be fairly bolt resistant. And then I've got also another one over here. And then we've got a kale. So this is Casper kale that I planted in the spring. This is kind of a neat variety. It's the first time I've tried this one, but I may need to pull that out when I get the peppers in. We'll see if we can plant around it. And then we've got one spinach left in here that is pretty much bolting. And then over here, hanging out with the fig trees, we've got an overwintered pepper plant. So I don't normally overwinter peppers, but this one actually overwintered in the unheated greenhouse. This is called Flexuosum. It's a much cold hardy pepper and it got probably down to 24 degrees in the greenhouse and this thing survived. It did lose all of its leaves, but it's really leafing back out now. Now in the raised beds back here, we've got several things planted out. We've got some tomatillos. That was one of the first things I actually planted out here and it's doing pretty good. It was getting really, really tall. I think I planted it a little too early, which is why I ended up planting it out a little earlier than I would have liked, but it seems to be doing pretty well. I've got two of those. You do need two tomatillo plants to get a harvest. So I've got two of those and we've got some flowers coming out on those. And it looks like this one did get some sunburn on the older leaves, but the new leaves are looking really good. And then in front of that, we've got a little bit of leeks. I've got one, two, three, four, five leeks that I put over here and I kind of scattered the leeks in wherever I could find room. I believe this is called Bee's Friend. I kind of, it's a flower I've never grown before, but I guess it's really liked by the bees, but I sprinkled some seeds in here, and I think that is the only one that's come up. I haven't seen any more. I do see some, some little sprouts coming up of something, but I'll have to wait until those get a little bit bigger to see if that's what those are or not. But I wanted to grow a couple of those here in between the tomatillos. And then behind the tomatillos, I've got the summer squashes planted out. I've got a Ford Hook zucchini here, and then I've got the Goldini zucchini over there. And then here we've got some lettuces that I planted out in the spring, and I've got some more of those radicchios, and these ones are doing much better for some reason than the other ones. They're a lot bigger, even though I planted them out at the same time. And then we've got some purple bok choy that is bolting. And then here we have some mulch down. This is just some hemp bedding from the chickens that I put down here. And this is where we'll be planting the other corn, the orchard baby corn. And then we have our bean poles. So these are the teepees made of bamboo that we like to grow the pole beans under. And each of these poles has a different variety. So I've got 10 different varieties I'm growing around this bed. And I think they've all popped up except for two varieties. So we have two varieties we're still waiting to germinate. And if those don't germinate, I'll probably just find some other uh, varieties to put in there. And it looks like we might have some slug damage or something on a few of these. So I might have to put down some sluggo. And then we've got our chives, which just started blooming. The garlic chives bloom a little bit later. So that's what this one here is. The garlic chives have a little bit flatter leaf than the regular chives, which are more round. And then back here, we've got our herb bed. We have some variegated sage here and then some thyme hiding back here. So this thyme I started from seed. So I just put this cage around it to keep other plants and things from shading it out. And then we've got regular sage here that is just starting to bloom. And the bees really like the, the sage flowers. And then we also have some parsley. We've got one parsley here that I started from seed and another one hiding way back there. And then this monstrosity is lovage. If you've never grown lovage before, these things get massive. I think, yeah, it's, I think it's taller than me now, but it's starting to get some flower heads, it looks like. Let's get a look back here. So it's not blooming quite yet, but it's getting, it's getting pretty close. But this is one plant of lovage will be more than enough 
for your needs. And what else do we have back here? We have a golden oregano back here. So that is starting to do really well. It, it turns completely green in the winter time. And then once it starts getting sunnier and warmer, it turns a beautiful golden color. And then here we have valerian. And I haven't really done anything with the valerian other than trim, trim it back occasionally, but I haven't used it for anything really. But I guess it's good for a sleep aid, but I haven't tried it. So one of these days I'll have to actually use it for something. But that gets really, really big. Not quite as big as the lovage, but it gets pretty close. So I just recently trimmed that back down to the ground and you can see there's already a lot of sprouts that are coming up. And in this middle bed, we have a hoop house around it that's got some wire fencing attached to it. And this was put here to keep the chickens out. And we could probably take this off and move it somewhere else because the chickens don't come in here this time of year. So we don't really need it on here. So we'll probably get that moved here sooner or later. But all this big, tall, green stuff you see, that is all my garlic. So we've got, I think, six different varieties of garlic that I planted uh, back in, I think, November or October. And then we've got a few lettuces here that I had extras of that I just kind of planted in between the garlic. And then on the other half of the bed, I've got all the onions. And the onions have actually grown quite a bit since I planted them. They're getting pretty tall. And I've got three different varieties of onions that I started from seed and planted out, I think, last end of last month, end of April. And then we've got a few red leaf lettuces here on the other end of this bed that I just planted a few weeks ago. And then this last bed here is probably my favorite. This is where all the tomatoes are. And I just planted the tomatoes in the ground last week, late last week. So they haven't been in the ground for too long. So I've got 16, I believe, different varieties here. Got eight cherry tomatoes and eight of the larger sized tomatoes. And I still have some lettuces in here that I planted in the spring that I kind of tried to plant the tomatoes around. So I'll be harvesting some of this lettuce here pretty soon. I've also got some kales dispersed throughout here and some more of that radicchio. So I've got I think two of the radicchios over here and I've been putting down, you can see I've got some sluggo in here um, because we've got a lot of slugs over in this bed and I'm trying something different with the tomatoes this year. So you can see we've got some straw mulch in this bed. Normally we use weed cloth for the tomatoes but decided to try something different this year. And the straw was put in the chicken run for about two weeks. So there shouldn't be any um, straw seeds or grass seeds in the straw because the chickens would have eaten all that already. And I've had straw before that I've done. Um, I think it was around the garlic a couple years ago and I didn't give it to the chickens first. And we had a lot of grass that sprouted from that. So if you have if you're planning on using straw, just keep that in mind and prepare to pull a bunch of grass when you use it as a mulch, unless you've got some chickens. But you can see I've got some companion plants here with the tomatoes. We've got some different varieties of kale here. And then we've also got some flowers. I believe this one is a Mexican sunflower or tithonia. And then we've got some different calendulas. We've got some more kale and of course, Everybody likes marigolds. Marigolds are a great companion for any plant that has pest problems. And then we've also got um, a dwarf sun gold here. And I think that's pretty much it. We've got the same kind of companions here. On the other side, we've got the scarlet kale, one of my favorite kales. Some more marigolds. The tithonia sunflower. Here's a Russian kale. And then we've got uh, some zinnias over here too. And this one is just starting to bloom. I didn't even realize this one opened up. So this one is the Mazurkia zinnia, which I haven't tried before. So looking pretty good. And then we've got another purple bok choy that's starting to flower. And we have another zinnia back here in the corner that hasn't bloomed yet. And more spinach. So all the tomatoes are 
looking pretty good so far. It's been kind of rainy and icky the last few days, but hopefully we'll get some sun pretty soon and these guys will really perk up. That's it for this month's update. I hope to do one of these at least once a month throughout this growing season. Thanks for watching and we'll talk to you again soon. If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe. You can also find me on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook.